Hola, me llamo Juan, and today is a sad day for Mexico City. There has been a tragedy on San Juanico, and it's the most severe LPG disaster in history. During the early morning of this Monday, one of the largest disasters in industrial history occurred in the Mexico City area, causing the greatest rescue effort to assist population in an emergency ever undertaken. The tragic catastrophe started in a large LPG storage and distribution center in San Juan, 20 kilometers north of Mexico City. The facilities owned by the Pemex State Oil Company consisted of six spherical storage tanks, four with a volume of 1,600 meters cube and two with a volume of 2,400 meters cube and, 80, and 48 horizontal cylindrical bullet tanks of different sizes. At the time of the disaster, the storage tanks containing, contain 11,000 meters cube of a mixture of propane and butane. The inhabitants of San Juan number about 40,000 and a further 60,000 live in the hills surrounding the village. The majority were poor country people living in one-story houses constructed of concrete pillars full with bricks and with roof of iron sheets. The disaster started due to LPG leakage, probably a pipe leakage or rupture due to excess pressure. A vapor cloud built up and was slowly moved by the northeast winds towards the ground placed fire pit located in the western part of the plant. The vapor cloud was ignited around 5.40 a.m. and was followed by an extensive fire at the plant area. The first explosion was registered on the seismograph at the University of Mexico at 5 hours, 44 minutes, and 52 seconds, and was followed by a dozen explosions within the next hour, some of them of bloody type, due to rupture of one or more storage tanks. Two of the explosions had an intensity of 0.5 on the Richter scale. Unburned and burning gas entered the houses south of the plant area and set fire to everything. Blast waves from the explosions not only destroyed a number of houses, but also shifted several cylindrical tanks from their supports and added more gas to the fire. The smaller spheres and some of the cylinders exploded, and fragments and even whole cylinders weighing around 30 tons were scattered over distances ranging up to 1,200 meters. So next we're going to go to our man on the field, Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes, are you there? Haley, this is Patrick Mahomes out here. Uh, I'm right out, standing right outside of Pemex Corporation where we just had a natural gas explosion uh, a few uh, hours, a few days ago. Um, I'm trying to see if I can get some sort of engineer out here to see if we can figure out what actually happened. I don't see anybody out here. Oh, oh, there, that, that looks like an engineer. That, that, uh, we need to go over there and ask right now what's going on. Excuse Sorry. me, sir. Sorry, Sorry. Sir. I really can't. So there was an explosion here a couple of days ago. We, the public needs to know many people were injured and hurt. There was a lot of thousands of people displaced. What happened in this situation? Do you have anything? Is there anything you can tell us? Uh, all I can say is that the facility was built according to all governmental uh -huh. standards, all safety standards for the industry, all API standards were followed, and uh, I think that if you want some answers, you should really uh, be looking at the zoning laws, how close these houses were built to the facility. Um, we followed every applicable procedure, and I just I, I don't I don't think there's uh, much else that I can say. So, sir, what you're telling me is that you guys. Had no of no wrongdoing done by the corporation. No, absolutely none. You know, we followed every procedure to the T. Uh, we did everything that we could to prevent this from happening. If you want answers, you need to uh, go talk to your local representatives. But sir, this has to be a massive breakdown of safety protocol within your company. I mean, an explosion such as this, are there not safeguards put in place to prevent this from happening? Oh, absolutely, there are, and we're still investigating the root cause. Uh, we're not 100% sure exactly how it was caused, uh, but what we do know is that the site was built and maintained to all applicable standards, and that's really all I can say. Well, there you have it, folks. We have a rep. What, what is your name, sir? Uh, Josh. And what is your position in this company? Uh, safety, safety engineer. We have a safety engineer promoted. here who just got promoted telling us that there's nothing going on here, that the company has no liability. There's no, you, I guess they're not to blame. Absolutely. All right, great. Thank you. Haley, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Haley, I found myself inside the Pemex Corporation building. I actually found a name tag of an actual engineer, and so I took that and I made it in. And, well, I'm gonna, I tried to set up an uh, interview with a safety engineering manager, and, well, we got to find out what's going on. I mean, it might not be ethical to just steal somebody's name tag, but I guess in this situation, the ends justify the means here. Um, so I'm going to take you to the safety manager, and he's going to hopefully answer some of our questions uh, regarding what happened here and what potentially could have gone on. And there's there's so much the public that doesn't know. Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, can we come in and ask you some questions? Yes, sir. I was expecting you guys. Ah, nice to meet you. Nice How you doing, Barra? Safety I'm doing manager. All right. I'm doing all right. Uh, well, 
I mean, as you know, there's been a massive explosion here in the uh, in the in the Pemex plant, and there's still so much that we, as as a public, do not know about the uh, as do not know. I actually spoke with a uh, safety uh, engineer. His name was Joshua, and he told me a lot about what happened, and he categorically denied any sort of wrongdoing done by by your company. Um, is there anything that you can tell us in terms of what happened? Um, what type of explosion this was? Um, do you guys have any sort of uh, numbers as to how many people were injured and was it a, any fault of the Pemex Corporation? Right, uh, first of all I want to say that uh, we're terribly uh, you know upset about what happened here in Mexico City uh, it's a very tragic loss. You know, there's been uh, you know it's a lot of casualties and a lot of injuries. Um, we're uh, working very closely with uh, the government to see what um, took place. We're trying to find the root cause analysis here. Um, as far as I'm concerned uh, Pemex does uh, Pemex does take a uh, you know, good amount of consideration. We uh, look into safety and we want to make sure that we're upholding the paramounts of our safety standards here uh, at our plant. Uh, we uh, want to make sure that we're following our API standards, which is I'm aware that we're following that um, up to the latest standards. Uh, so we're uh, work, working closely. We're trying to identify what's going on. As of now, we don't have uh, any uh, updates on what's okay. going on, so we're going to look into that. Um, but once we have an answer, we'll get back to you guys. Okay. So your safety en engineer, Joshua, told me that um, there could have been local issue, or the, the regulations were a bit too light, and maybe that uh, some, some safety standards were not up to snuff and potentially could have caused this disaster to happen. Do you agree with him, and do you think that there should be potentially stricter standards, or uh, do you think everything is going swell right now and this was just a one-off disaster? Right. Um, I can't honestly speculate uh, until we uh, look into this and investigate to see what exactly happened. Um, was there some man manufacturer mechanical faults mm -hmm. or was there a safety hazard going on that we did not take into consideration? Um, what we need to do is uh, we've looked into the standards and we have been following our safety standards. Uh, we, we made sure that we're up to date on that. So um, we'll investigate further and we'll let you guys know if anything does come around. Okay. Um, Will you guys be allowing law enforcement and um, investigative teams to uh, have full, complete, unobstructed access to the Pemex Corporation plant so they can do independent investigations and figure out what exactly was the root cause or um, will there be some sort of restriction placed for you guys? Um, I don't have any comment on that to say right now, um, but we are working with the government. That's all I can say. Is, uh, we're working very closely with them. Um, we know that uh, we're also working with the employees that have been working uh, during that shift to see what exactly happened, even the shifts before that to see maybe if something led up to that. Um, we can't honestly speculate until we have a thorough investigation and that's what we're doing right now. Okay, and so I'm assuming that you guys are not going to instruct any sort of uh, narrative from any employees as well. It's going to be completely natural as to whatever they have to say. Uh, yeah, uh, pretty much what we do here is we want to ensure the safety of the people. We want to ensure the safety of the employees and the nearby uh, residents. Um, that's one of our top priorities here at uh, Pemex. So uh, we'll make sure that um, something like this won't happen again. Sounds good. Well, there you have it, Haley. This is uh, Bra, safety engineering manager. And, um, well, he's, he's saying that they're going to work with the government and they're going to work with any sort of investigative teams to figure out the root of the cause. And he's also saying that there's no... Um, safety standards or protocols that were breached by the Pamex Corporation and I guess that's, that's all we have here. We still have a lot of questions that the public needs to answer and hopefully we can get those in the coming days. Yep. Keep swinging. Okay Haley, so now I'm going to go speak with a government official to try to figure out what they know about what happened in this, uh, this incident here. Excuse me, excuse me, Mrs. Uh, Uchenna. Uchenna, Mrs. Uchenna. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything that you guys know about what potentially happened in the uh, uh, in the uh, disaster at the Pemex Corporation. Um, okay, I actually have some stats right here with me. Okay. Um, the tragedy was very sad for the whole city, of course, but it was about 500 to 600 deaths, and 300 plus were never identified. And it was about like 5,000 to 7,000 severe injuries, and 10,000 to 60,000 people were made homeless, and this is very sad. But also about 31 million dollars in damages and destruction of a third of the energy supply to Mexico City. So there are some things the company could have done to to prevent this that they didn't do, and that's very sad. So we would encourage them to do timely inspections, to maintain industrial standards, to have better maintenance, and to 
effectively operate the operator training and also to house um, to build the houses appropriately at appropriate distance away. So, but um, the city were doing so much to relieve, to provide relief for the people that have been displaced and provide support for those that have lost their family members. And we hope such tragedy doesn't occur again in Mexico City. Thank you so much for everything that you guys have done so far for to help the uh, help the people that were displaced by this tragedy. Um, is there anything uh, planned in terms of uh, preventing any of this happening in the future? Yeah, yeah. As I said before, we're going to have stricter rules, stricter regulations. Make sure companies are following all the rules and prevent to prevent such tragedies like this because it hurts my heart to see my city being destroyed like this and we hope this doesn't happen again. But um, I'm going to be running for office again okay. in 2006, so I hope that I can get the vote of everybody okay. and with legislation that I can make, this will not happen again. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. No problem. Well, there you have it, Haley. Um, I guess we're not going to have any issues like this again in terms of what the uh, the public health official is telling me. and. Um, well, I mean, this was one of the worst disasters in Mexico's uh, history, Mex and uh, some things have to change in order to prevent this from happening again, and hopefully the um, right people are going to be making the right decisions, and we won't have to ever do this type of investigative reporting again. Wow, Haley, you missed a banquet yesterday. It was super fun. Oh, I wish I would have went. Oh, wait. wait Sorry, we're back on camera. Well... Thank you, Patrick Mahomes. We owe you for all that hard work you put, put in to find out what happened in this tragedy. And we want to thank everyone, and hopefully that sometime soon we'll be able to come back as a city and, you know, build up again. Thank you, guys. We'll see you guys tomorrow, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> While the explosions that took place in San Juanico in 1984 was some of the most devastating chemical fire and explosions that have ever taken place, some things could have been done to prevent and mitigate the disaster. A few things were presented in uh, the case documents that we were given. One of them is that an 8-inch line was ruptured during a transfer between a refinery 250 miles away. This 8-inch line ruptured for an unknown cause, but we can assume that maintenance might have had something to do with it. The pipe could have been corroded and over time neglected and they might have been able to prevent this from happening altogether. A second thing is that the pressure drop was relayed to the control room and operators did attempt to find the source of the pressure drop. Now this pressure drop, since they weren't able to find it, it allowed for a gas cloud to accumulate for five to ten minutes, which is what led it to be such a large disaster before it found a flame. Um, had the maintenance staff or the operators been able to more diligently find the source of the leak, it would have also mitigated, mitigated the disaster by allowing the gas to dissipate or not get so big. A third thing that could have been done by the city is not allow people to build houses so close to the plant. Now this was just a few weeks before Bhopal and the idea of a safe distance, safe minimum distance from the plant was not well understood or well practiced in industry. Going forward, people should be building farther away from sites like this. This is a photo of, of the actual incident. Some of the spheres are erupting in flames and you can see all of the different vessels. Uh, there were over four dozen vessels involved in this explosion including these large spheres in the background. This is the photo of the site before and you can see the site up top and the people are quite literally just across the street. This is an animation that was done during the investigation in 1984 of the gla a gas cloud that accumulated. This was before the explosion. So you can see that the gas cloud covered, it was about 600 feet long before it exploded. This is a photo of the devastation of the city and of the plant after the explosion. And you can see these vessels here were from the first photo uh, shot that way. So uh, the, the incident was a huge disaster and many parties involved should have made better corrective actions to prevent this from happening.